All right, everyone, number eight, the moment you've all been waiting for, the eighth and final exercise in our eight exercise progression for fixing your right hip shift when you're squatting is goblet squats. Now we've done all this prep work to prepare the body to iron out some asymmetries, maybe to elucidate some of the asymmetries so that you can think about them and cue them yourself. But now we still need to get this back to squatting. We still need to find some way to transfer these gains in mobility over to gains in function. The warm-up, the, the warm-up, the first seven exercises is designed to help you out here. It's designed to be a bunch of different random stuff that you can try. We had rock backs with your hands on the ground. We had rocking on your back, back and forth. We had rolling side to side with one leg up and one elbow down. We had push-up position planks with even pressure on your hands. Remember elucidating some of the asymmetries that you might have. We had five, we had a supported hip hike. We had six, we had a march. Now we're standing, we're opposing a lot of gravity. We don't have anything for our hands to be supported on. Number seven, we have an alternating lunge where we're tapping the outside heel, making sure our foot stays flat. And now number eight, we're taking all that and we're putting it into a symmetrical-ish squat pattern. But I don't want you to just hop right into barbell back squats if that's what you were trying to fix. I want you to use what you can, right? So even if your goal is to fix your shift in your back squat, don't jump right to it because that is completely different than anything else that we've done. So instead, we're gonna use a counterweight, in this case, my couch pillow, to teach us how to shift back. Okay, so I'm holding this weight my feet are kind of wide right here, and I'm gonna keep actively pushing through the arches of my feet as I come down. It seems counterintuitive. I can keep pushing there. I can keep feeling pressure there while I come down slowly. It's doable, just like this. Remember, uh, don't look down. We're looking straight up. We're keeping our head kind of relaxed. We're just trying to load our legs, and we come like this. Okay, I'd be shocked if after all those exercises, your shift was totally gone. If it is, leave a comment, let me know, because that's why I do what I do. But it probably isn't. Your shift is probably heavily ingrained in your nervous system. And it's gonna take some time to fix that, to um, maybe not even fix is the right word, but to teach yourself how to do it a different way. So what I would also be very surprised to hear is if it didn't feel even a little bit different. If it didn't, you're gonna to need to spend more time on one component of the warm-up or the, the previous seven exercises. Maybe you need to listen to your body a little bit better when you're doing your plank. Maybe you need to sit in that uncomfortable hip hike position for a little bit longer. Um, I don't know, this is a case by cases kind of thing. It's up to you to listen to what's happening in your body, to feel out what your body is doing and what it is trying to do, and then come up with a reasonable response. How can I, what, what of this is appropriate and how can I fix the parts that are inappropriate? So again, if we're doing our squats, mine actually does feel a little bit different. My hips feel a lot looser. Um, and squatting down feels a lot more effortless than it normally does. And I would be shocked if I didn't have any sort of right hip shift still. Now, my case is kind of weird because my left foot turns out a little bit more and my left hip bone is a little bit further behind the right. It, the, the joint is a little bit retroverted, we say. so. I don't necessarily look symmetrical at my feet all the time, but what I'm trying to do is fix what are my hips and back doing? Can that stay straight? And can I move with you know, mobility and a little bit less effort than normal? Throw our pillow on the couch. 
That's it. That's number eight, the goblet squat. Do as many as you need. And that's kind of the secret for the sets and reps on all this. Generally, just do one set of, you know, a minute of each of them. But if you need to, spend a little bit more time on your squatting. Maybe after my goblet squat, I got to go to a front squat or a safety squat bar squat. Maybe I need to do more lunging. I don't know. Pay attention. What things do you struggle with? Do the things that you struggle with, because if you weren't struggling, you probably wouldn't need to do them. That's it. That's the eight. So again, we had a rock back for number one. We had a rocking back and forth on your back for number two. We had the supine knee to elbow rolling side to side for number three. Don't fall. Number four was a plank in a push-up position with even pressure on our hands. We're not letting one hand roll out and the other hand go flat. We're kind of trying to keep even pressure here and we're trying to breathe through it and stay comfortable. Make sure it doesn't change what you're trying to do. That was number four. Number five is the supported bent over left hip hike. We feel that left inner thigh. We feel the right glute muscle. We keep the right foot flat down. Keep that hip tuck. Remember, get a little bit of ab, not too much, but a little bit. Uh, that was number five. Number six was marching in place, or you could just, you know, you kind of walk like this, right? This works too. Number seven was the alternating lunge. Again, we're turning and tapping the outside of that heel on the opposite side because that teaches us how to turn into this hip. That he teaches us, remember we said, when we have a right hip shift, our hips turn to the right, especially here on this left lunge, we really need to make sure we stick that position. We need to make sure we don't lose our heel and we don't you know, roll out on our ankle so we don't get the hip. We need to make sure we're loading that hip. I don't wanna to touch this way. I don't wanna to touch this way because I don't get enough loading of my hip that way. I want to touch this way, outside of the heel, and then we come back up. And remember, we're not leaning back when we come back up. There's a lot of stuff that I look for when you're doing these exercises, so that's why I kind of ramble through things. Hopefully you pick them up, and hopefully you see them multiple times, and you'll start to say, oh, I forgot about that, or, oh yeah, I know that. And then you'll become the coach of yourself and your friends and whatever else. Right, that was number seven, the walking lunge. Number eight was finally the goblet squat. Just hold a weight in front of your body and try to squat evenly. Keep pushing evenly through the arches of both of your feet. That is it. My long-winded eight exercise progression is done. If you have comments, there's a great section below this video for you to ask your questions, leave your comments. If you found it helpful, please let me know. Um, that's all I really want to know. If you didn't find it helpful, I won't keep doing it. <laughs> Enjoy yourselves.